Bank of America a short while ago calculated that since the collapse of Lehman, government debt has intensified by $30 trillion. Corporates debt by $25 trillion. Household by $9 trillion. And financial debt by $2 trillion. And with central banks awaited to support government debt, Bank of America warns that the biggest recession risk is disorderly rise in credit spreads and corporate deleveraging. From its side, the IMF is warning that the world debt rises to 226% of GDP. Low rates fuel the risks. Expansive monetary policies have saved growth, but push investors towards riskier and less liquid assets. Debt growth continues inexorably, especially in emerging countries. World debt reached 226.5% of GDP in 2018 and continues its inexorable growth at a breadth of $188 trillion, according to preliminary estimates released on Wednesday, 16th October by the IMF during the press conference for the presentation of the fiscal monitor. The IMF then warns against the side effects of ultra-low rates. The difficult hunt for yields pushes investors, including insurance and pension funds, towards riskier and less liquid assets. Even for the non-financial sector then, supervisory tools such as those introduced for banks are needed, the fund warns in the Global Financial Stability Report also released. $8,000 billion. Put like this, they seem unreal numbers from comics, but they are real numbers. According to the latest research by the Institute of International Finance, the IIF, public and private debt globally in the first quarter of 2019 alone increased by this figure, by $8,000 billion. This is the largest quarterly increase since the first quarter of 2016, which brings global debt to the figure of $247,000 billion, a mountain equal to 318% of the GDP of the whole world. Now, these numbers are the effect of a decade of ultra-expansionary monetary policies, which have increased global liquidity and brought interest rates to zero, or even uh, below zero in many parts of the world. This has favored everyone's use of debt, businesses, states, and families. Today, however, the world is at a turning point. First of all, liquidity is becoming less abundant. According to Pictet Asset Management calculations, after central banks injected a total of $2,600 billion of liquidity into the financial system in 2017, including the Chinese Central Bank, in 2018, injections fell to 580 billion, and in 2019, to 40 billion. Net of the Chinese bank, $80 billion were drained from the system in 2019. And in addition, interest rates are rising, especially the United States ones. This, therefore, risks weighing in a hyper-indebted world, which has covered itself with debts thanks to an ecosystem made of zero interest rates and abundant liquidity that is no longer there. And it risks weighing more on the most vulnerable subjects, those with variable rate debt and those exposed to the dollar. The IIF points its finger at these two categories. According to the Institute, U.S. companies are particularly exposed to the risk of rising interest rates. Not only do they have a very high debt, $20,000 billion, they are not only very exposed on the fickle bond market, 43% of their debts in bonds, but also they have an exposure to variable rates of 25%. Not so much, but enough to weigh in a cycle of rate hikes. The other weak category is that of those who got into dollars, even though they live outside the United States, excluding emerging markets, writes IIF. 30% of the non-U.S. bond market is denominated in dollars. From today to the first quarter of 2019, 900 billion of these debts will mature. Finally, there is the category most vulnerable today, that of emerging countries and their companies. Many countries are hyper-indebted in foreign currency, both at state and corporate level. 
Turkey, Hungary, Argentina, Poland, and Chile have more than 50% of the total debt, public and private, in foreign currency, according to the IIF. About 2,700 billion of emerging country debt will expire by the end of 2019, of which a third are denominated in dollars. For Argentina, Colombia, Egypt, and Nigeria, about 75% of the debt maturing in the next year and a half is in dollars. This puts an additional risk on refinancing these debts. All that remains is to hope that the knots of a decade of easy money will not come to a head. Although the fund does not anticipate a recession, Fidel Gaspar, director of the fund's tax affairs department, reiterates the call on the largest global economies to prepare to act in a coordinated manner in the event of a major crisis, the rush to debt. The increase in world debt is marginal compared to 2017, when the world debt was at 225% of GDP. But the comparison with 2007 is impressive. 12 years ago, the debt was less than 194% of GDP. G20 advanced economies rose from 236% of GDP to 269%. However, the debt of emerging markets that are part of the club of the big wins, such as India, Argentina, Brazil, China, Turkey, which jumped from 100 to 190% of the GDP, is the most striking. This is also partly the effect of the era of ultra-low and negative rates and hyper-accommodative monetary policies, which on the one hand have helped to contain the impact of the global slowdown and the war of duties. Without these policies, the fund supports world growth. Revised down to 3% for 2019 would be 0.5% lower and some countries would be in recession. On the other hand, the same policies have fueled the debt race pushing investors to uh, take higher risks and creating vulnerabilities in the financial system, which can become a threat to growth itself, warns the Global Financial Stability Report. According to the IMF, the public debt is 82.8% of global GDP, while that on the private non-financial sector is 143.6%. The latter in emerging countries went from 64% in 2007 to 140% in 2018, while it remained stable among advanced economies at 156%. The other side of the coin. The IMF, in the Global Financial Stability Report, stresses that government bonds and corporate bonds with negative returns are now a mountain of $15 trillion. Ten-year yields are below zero in many countries such as Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Japan, Holland, Sweden, and Switzerland. And the markets, the fund's technicians continue to expect that one-fifth of government bonds will have negative returns until at least 2022. At the same time, businesses, the IMF warns, are becoming increasingly indebted and their ability to meet deadlines is weakening. In the event of a significant economic slowdown, perhaps triggered by US tariffs on European cars, the debt of companies unable to cover interest payments with their profits could rise to $19 trillion. That is, about 40% of all corporate debt in the eight major economies in the world. The mountain of debt and the deterioration of its quality is the downside of the generalized easing of monetary policies. For the fund, the central banks did the best they could, but their room for maneuver is now running out and the time has come to turn on a beacon on the non-financial sector to avoid a repeat of the new subprime mortgage crisis. The estimated share of speculative debt for businesses is now close to 50% of the total in China and the United States and is even higher in Italy, in Spain and the United Kingdom despite the significant drop from the global financial crisis, reads the report. In the poorest developing countries, the frontier economies, external debt rose on average to 160% of the value of exports, from 100% in 
in 2008 due to the capital flows arriving from advanced countries looking for more remunerative investments. Like businesses, these debtors too would feel bad in the event of a credit crunch and a surge in financing costs. The banking sector also has its problems. The sub fund's resilience has increased thanks to tighter supervision since the global financial crisis. However, the fund warns negative returns and the flattening of the rate curve have tested banks' profitability and some have seen their market capitalization fall. Non-American banks also remain exposed to dollar liquidity, which could amplify the impact of any credit squeezes. However, the focus is mainly on the non-banking financial sector. The financial weaknesses of non-financial corporations and non-bank financial entities are high compared to historical standards. Among other non-bank financial entities, weaknesses are high in 80% of economies. A share comparable to that at the height of the financial crisis, warns the Global Financial Stability Report. The recommendations for governments are automatic. In order to mitigate risks, macro-prudential tools are needed for non-financial corporations whose debt must be subject to stricter supervision. Tobias Adrian, head of the Global Financial Stability Report, invites governments to take action, saying, urgent to mitigate the risks to financial stability. New macroprudential tools are needed for non-bank financial institutions following the path that has made it possible to strengthen the lenders after the big crisis. And above all, it is forbidden to take steps back on the regulation of the markets. The global economy is going through a phase of synchronized slowdown. And in the event of a sharp slowdown, $19,000 billion in corporate debt will be at risk, equivalent to 40% of the debt of the eight main economies. These are some of the key steps in the intervention of the new Director General of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, that launches an appeal. If a new crisis arrives, it will be necessary to respond in a coordinated way. And there's an invitation to move quickly, borrowing a quote from Shakespeare, Better three hours early than a minute late. The IMF's World Economic Outlook will cut estimates for 2020 global GDP. For 2020, the forecast had been lowered from 3.6 to 3.5%. The OECD also indicates trade tensions as the main curbing factor, and his GDP forecasts for 2020 have been cut from 3.4 to 3%. The first cause of the slowdown is the tariff war. Less than two years ago, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, began his crusade with tariffs against China, Europe, and all those countries that, according to him, were taking advantage of America. It was January 2018. Since then, the calls to avoid trade wars have only been repeated, accompanied by signs of a slowdown in the global economy. Corporate debt. To support the real economy, Central banks around the world are keeping rates very low, and in many cases in negative territory. Where appropriate, Georgieva reiterates, central banks should also keep the cost of money low. This, however, warns the director of the IMF, also generates dangerous side effects. In some countries, companies are taking advantage of low rates to accumulate debt with which, rather than investing, they finance mergers and acquisitions. The fund estimates that in the event of a severe slowdown, the debt of companies at risk of default would rise to $19 trillion, or 40% of the total debt in the eight main economies. A level higher than that seen during the financial crisis, says Yorjiva. Financial risk. There is not only corporate debt that worries the IMF. Low or even negative returns from public bonds forced pension funds and insurance companies to take higher risks. At the same time, investors flock to emerging markets which offer more substantial returns. However, this exposes small economies to sudden reversals of capital flows.